Did you know that Excel has a family tree generator? It's a tool that lets you input names and relationships and it draws a family tree for you. It sounds great, but it may not actually suit what you need. Let's take a closer look. The family tree generator is a template which you need to install, but the install is for free. So open up a new instance of Microsoft Excel, go up to the file menu, and over here, click on more templates. And just type in family tree generator into the search. And here it just comes back with one template, the family tree generator, click on that, and then click the create button. The description for the family tree generator is a little bit misleading. It says make a three generation family tree. It's actually a four generation family tree, but you'll see that in a moment. I just click create here, and this is what you get. If this yellow box here is obscuring your view, just click away. It has two tabs, and the first tab it puts you on is, may not be obvious as what it's doing here, but this is where you actually edit the names and relationships of that go into a family tree. So you name the grandparents, and there are two grandparents named here. We'll come back to the fact that there are only two later. Glenn is the grandfather here, and Vange is the grandmother. Then Glenn and Vange have three children. It's not the fact that Glenn and Vange are a little bit unimaginative and named their first and second sons as James. There is only one son, James, but he has married twice because this tree allows you to put in multiple marriages, right? So we've got James married Ellen and then James married Nika. There is another child, a sister to James, who is called Misty. And Misty also married twice. Misty married Jake and Misty married Mike. And then Royce is the third child of these two grandparents who married Karen. In the generation down, this is at your parents' level. And then this is at your level. So it would be you and your siblings under second generation children. One of the features of this particular template is that it deals with the multiple marriages like so. So we see that there are three children and their spouses have been put under the parents, James and Ellen. But another two ch children of, of James, Tom and Jen, have been put under the marriage of James and Nika. And this is achieved because the template has a drop down box. And when you're entering in the parents at each generation of a, of a child, you choose from the couple's that you named in the first generation. So that's how that split is achieved. And the same applies down to the third generation. So this is where you actually do the work in this first tab of family members. And when you're finished, you click on create family tree. And that takes you to the second tab and it draws the tree for you. It generates the tree. I'm just going to zoom out from this to get more of it on the page. Okay, so to reiterate what it's done, we'll go over to James here, who married twice, married Ellen and married Nika. And the way that the generator has sorted that out is that they put it in this perfectly correct layout where you can see that this person and this person are the children of James and Ellen. Walter here is married twice, whereas these three siblings here are the children of James and Nika. Zoom out another lot and we see it there. Now the one thing that you may have noticed at this point is that this tree does not fit on a single landscape page. If I go up to file, print to see the preview, show print preview, you can see it's that's what prints on landscape and it will print on two pages. If that's not what you want, if you definitely want a three or four generation tree that prints on a landscape page, I'll put some links in the description below that will take you to how to make a template that prints on a single landscape page in Excel for four, five, six, and seven generation trees. The next thing I will point out is that this is the default entries. So this is what 
comes pre-filled. And you may have noticed that there's only one set of grandparents. Of course, most of us, when we're doing our family trees and we're starting with ourselves at the lowest level, we are expecting to put in four grandparents. That's not how this tree works. Its focal point or its starting point is from the grandparents. And notice how it says, create your own family tree down to three generations. Well, it's actually, it's four generations. You've got your grandparents, parents, your own level, and then your children and the children of your siblings down here. That's one, two, three, four, that's four generations. Is This is actually starting from one pair of grandparents, which is not normally how we go about our family trees, but if that's what suits you, then this could well work for you. And maybe you just do it twice and two separate spreadsheets for the two sets of grandparents. I actually added in an extra set of grandparents here. So suppose I put in Tom and Mary. And because the colour went changed to purple, I thought, oh, that's great. Well, they'll kind of um, appear. So I actually worked my way down adding in children of Tom and Mary. It does let you put in. So if I go Tom and Mary and stick in a child of Tom and Mary, with we'll say Harold marries Caroline and parents of Harold or it does let you pick Tom and Mary here in the drop down list but again if I go create family tree go out to 25 I'll go out to 30 percent for convenience yeah, as you can, there's Glenn and Vange there, it's a bit small, but it hasn't put in that second set of grandparents. So just to reiterate, this family tree generator is basically from the focal point is to you start with one set of grandparents and work your way down. When I started using the template to create a family tree, what I wanted to do was instead of starting from scratch, I just wanted to change the names here and then change the drop downs. And Excel gave me an error that the template really couldn't deal with whatever I was doing. I find the simplest thing to do was to clear out all of this, this sample and start from scratch. And in fact, maybe that's what you're supposed to do, although the template doesn't tell you that. But it does give you a button saying reset family members. So if you're going to start using the template, just click this button, reset family members, click yes. And here we start from scratch. Now, the same thing will happen when you enter in your own members and you're working your way down. You can, you just go up to create family tree and it draws what you put in. Don't by mistake hit reset family members because it'll just clear out what you've done. There's no undo for that. You can't just click control Z and go back. So the key is to save as you go. There's another irritation, not complication, irritation with the save but I'll show you that a bit later. If you want to get back to the actual sample, all you have to do is install the family tree gener generator again and the sample is there for you in a separate se spreadsheet. Okay, so how does this work? Well, let's uh, crack on with it. So here is where we use the drop down list box and the only entry is James and Rose. We'll create a second child. Okay, so that's the children of the grandparents. It's your parents' generation. I'm not going to mess around with um, multiple marriages. You saw how that worked earlier. I'll move down to your generation. Now here's where the drop down list becomes useful. When I expand the drop down list, it now gives me three choices. I'll take the last choice here. And then the final generation. You don't get the option of putting in a spouse. It seems a fairly arbitrary choice, but there you go. So everybody has one child at this point, so I'll make sure that one couple has two children. So that is this tree. I'm now going to hit create family tree. If I hit reset family members, that would all clear out. Wouldn't, I'd have to type it all in again, so don't do that. Hit create family tree and there we have our tree. One thing that I found a little bit odd is how it displays multiple children. As you can see, they're stacked on top of the other with this vertical line. I initially thought that this was actually a way of creating multiple generations. And this was when I was looking at the example tree that came with the installation. It's not that Harry is the father of Jason. It's just that they're 
or siblings. That's visually inconsistent with the rest of the layout, but it is what it is. The other thing you may have noticed, and it probably would bother you more because it bothers me more, is that there is only enough space for a first name in a family tree. But it's not that difficult to amend it in a way that it actually will display first and last names. So if I toggle back to the family members tab, and let's say, i uh, say James is James Beckwith, who married Rose Brooks. Notice how the drop down kind of realizes that something's gone wrong here. It's now got a problem because it can't find James and Rose. So we, we do have to make that, this change here. Okay, and just at st stopping there, I'll go and see how that looks. So hit create family tree and it will redraw it. And now you can see why they are only allowing you to put in a single name. It's because the, w the font size they've chosen means that with the average first and last name is going to be truncated. Rose Brooks fits in there perfectly nicely, but a relatively short name like James and this two syllable surname does not fit. This is not a big deal. They have chosen a rather large font size. The font size for the name cells is 16. So the best thing to do is to toggle it down. Let's try 14. I'll go down to, which still doesn't quite fit, but they're just a reasonably average name. James at 12 fits nicely. What happens then when I go back and start working on these again, so Aaron is going to be a Beckwith. Once again, I've got to go and fix up the drop down lists. And let's see how that's looking. Yeah, so it actually <laughs> overwrites the font changes that you did. So the trick is to complete out this with first name and last name for every entry. And then finally, when you've got the whole thing completed out, which I won't do here, hit create family tree for the last time and then go and change the font size. And if you want a quick way, you can just take an entire range like this and go up to Rockwell 16 and change that to Rockwell 12. And as you can see, Aaron, Belinda and Colin are fitting nicely within the, the boundaries. If a tree that only has one set of grandparents doesn't suit you, then you're probably looking for the more traditional family tree. Something that looks like this. Here is the lowest person. We've got two parents, four grandparents, and eight sets of great grandparents. This four generation family tree will print in landscape mode on a single printed page. I have a tutorial which walks you through creating a four generation vertical family tree that looks like that in Excel. And it's literally step by step of how to draw the lines, draw the boxes. We also have, if you prefer a visual form, you can look over my shoulder while I'm actually creating this in Excel in a video walkthrough. I link to the article and to the video in the description below. So that's four generations in this vertical format. The other kind of format of a traditional family tree looks something like this, where we look at it from left to right, it's laid out horizontally. Now it's this horizontal layout, this is a five generation family tree, so it goes back to 16 great great grandparents. I can't fit a five generation pedigree tree in the vertical format, there's just not enough space to fit it on a single page. But this five generation pedigree tree will print on a single page in landscape mode. And the way I've set out the tutorial is if you don't want photos, well, you don't have to add the photos. If you don't want the dates, if you just want the names, you don't need to put in those fields. So this particular article, it comes with an associated video walkthrough looking over my shoulder as I'm clicking and dragging, etc., to create this look and feel. We have similar for a six generation pedigree tree. This is what it looks like. This particular one doesn't have photos, but you could squeeze in photos if you choose. We have a, an associated video 
that I'll also put the link in in the description below. And then finally, and this is a real squeeze to fit on a single page, the seven generation family tree. Quite a squeeze as you can see. But if you're going to the library and you want a single page printout to guide your research, this is the one for you. And again, we've got a tutorial walkthrough in article form and a video walkthrough. Link in the description below. All of these different trees, seven generation, six, five, four generation, we put together over 20 templates of all the different options into a single bundle that's available for sale on our Gumroad store. I will also put a link to that in the description below. But if you want to do it yourself, just follow through the tutorials and you'll get there with a, a little bit of pointing and clicking and dragging. It'll take you possibly about between an hour and an hour and a half to create the more complex trees.